So continuing on this artistic theme, we have another treat for you. This woman became the National Poetry Slam champion only four months into her slam career. And she's placed in the top ranking in various other slam poetry competition. She's also performed for over one million people at the March for Women's Lives rally in Washington, D.C. in 2004. I mean, she's been published in Dutch, German, and her work has been used as curriculum in several universities and colleges for HIV education. And the list goes on. But most notably, her poetry interweaves her commitment to social activism and women's rights advocacy. We're talking about the poetry slamist with the mostest, Sonia Renee. Soul Rebel Lulu got together with her to find out how using poetry has been a vehicle for her own personal growth as a woman. Who knows? Maybe she'll perform something for us. Listen. So I wanted to know when you first realized the power of words. Hmm. Um, I would say that I, I realized the power of words as a as a little girl. I don't think I turned that into kind of an understanding of poetry until I was much older. Um, I sort of happenstancely fell into spoken word or performance poetry. Um, I was working for a nonprofit in Washington, D.C. Um, that did HIV prevention with street-based prostitutes. And there's a spoken word organization called Mother Tongue that does benefits for local nonprofits for women. And so they were doing a benefit for my organization. And I, over uh, happy hour drinks, read some scathing poem that I had written about an ex-boyfriend many, many, many moons prior. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so it, I guess my boss got the notion that I actually wrote poetry. And so she asked me to write something for this event um, and I just kind of instantly fell in love. So, Were you nervous? Yeah. Oh, I was terrified, you know, sweating and <laughs> and hot and everything, but I was also um, so instantly felt like this was exactly where I was supposed to be. Do you think that the poetry scene is something that's really welcoming to women? Mm-hmm. Um, I think the, no. Well, hmm, I don't know. That's a, that's a hard one. I think uh, as a whole, Poetry in general has been very much uh, inspired by a lot of female voices, you know, particularly, um, you know, in the African-American community. But beyond that, you know, some of the most famous writers have been women, you know, Anne Sexton, you know, uh, Nikki Giovanni, Sonia Sanchez, you know, Audre Lorde. The, the list goes on and on and on of, of really profound female writers. Um, when you start talking about like, competitive performance poetry, if you're talking about slam, uh, it's definitely been much more of a boys game, um, even though women kick butt every time they go, but it's hard to get women to kind of play. What are some of the issues that you wish were addressed or that you would have liked to have been aware of as a younger woman, particularly 15 to 20 years old? For me, one of the core issues uh, around that age is um, really understanding um, my power outside of sexuality, particularly in this culture right now that's just oversaturated with images of women as only sex objects, as only capable of dancing in your video in a thong or rapping about how great, you know, their whatever is. And so uh, I think that 15 to 20 is that age where you start saying, this is how I relate in the world. This is how people recognize me in the world. This is where my power lies. Um, And I, I wish that someone would have told me that I was, you know, more powerful as a speaker than I was as a girl with big boobs. You know, like I wish, I wish someone would have told me that then. I wish that there, that um, I knew that there were ways to relate in this world that didn't have anything to do with my sexuality and only to do with my intelligence and my strength and my wisdom and, you know, whatever gifts it was that I was bringing. They didn't have anything to do with my biology. Uh, yeah, that's what I wish I knew. And that's what I want girls today to know, you know, that it's, you know, it's cute that he thinks you're cute. That's great. You know, but you have so much more to offer. Figure out what that is. So what has your use of poetry to express yourself done for you personally? It has been a complete catalyst uh, for, you know, kind of self Um, reflection and understanding. It has really changed um, the way that I relate in the world. Um, I feel like I'm a much better articulator of my own space and presence and um, philosophies uh, because of poetry. I feel far more sane (laughs) now that I have an artistic outlet um, than before I had that outlet. You know, it, it, for me, it is the um, it's the bottom line in activism. So it allows me to to start somewhere. You know, like there are 
a thousand issues on this planet that, you know, I want to fix all of them because, you know, that's what we want to do. But but poetry gives me a place to at least start, you know. Maybe I can't be hands-on in everything because I can't because I only got two hands. Um, You know, but I've got, you know, a billion words and I can use them every time I feel like something needs to be said about something. You seem like a woman who is full of strengths and confidence. (laughs) What would you like to say to young women who maybe have things to say and haven't found their voice yet? Um, That, you know, one one of the things that I tell people all of the time when I'm at readings and someone will come up to me and they'll say, you know, I have this journal that I've been keeping, but I'm afraid to share it with anyone. And I just, I really want to remind women of the, you know, the transformative power of your voice and your presence on this earth. And I think that sometimes we forget that because we live in a planet that can make us feel very, very small. Um, But, you know, our ability, you know, just innately, you know, um, by being on this planet is so immensely powerful. And oftentimes it starts with just opening your mouth, you know, and speaking your truth, whatever your truth is, um, and believing that your truth has value. You know, because it does, because it's yours. Um, And no one else can speak your truth, which makes it unique and one of a kind and essential. Um, And so I think it's, you know, for me, it's about telling women that, you know, their voice is, you know, is needed. It's needed and it's desired by the universe. If anyone's interested in hearing more of my work or you just want to shoot me a message, I like people. So you should hit me up at MySpace, my MySpace page. Um, It's www.myspace.com forward slash Sonia Renee is real. And that is S-O-N-Y-A-R-E-N-E-E-I-S-R-E-A-L. And we can also search your name on YouTube and find some of your other performances, which are immaculate. Oh, thank you. Google me. (laughs) Culturally diversified biracial girl with a small diamond nose ring and a pretty smile. Poses beside the words, women deserve better. And I almost let her non-threatening grin begin to infiltrate my psyche till I read the unlikely small print at the bottom of the ad. Sponsored by the U.S. Secretariat for Pro-Life Activities and the Knights of Columbus. On a bus in a city with a population of 563,000, four teenage mothers on the bus with me, one Latina woman with three children under three and no signs of a daddy, one 16-year-old black girl, Standing in 22 degree weather with only a sweater and a book bag and a bassinet with an infant that ain't even four weeks yet, tell me that yes, women do deserve better. Women deserve better than public transportation rhetoric from the same people who won't give their teenage mother a ride to the next transit, won't let you talk to their kids about safer sex, have never had to listen as the door slams behind the man who adamantly says that it ain't his, leaving her to wonder how she'll raise this kid. Women deserve better than the $300 tan if an AFDC will provide that family of three, or the $6 an hour job at KFC with no benefits for her new baby, or the college degree she may never see because you can't have infants at the university. Women deserve better than lip service paid for by politicians who have no alternatives to abortion, though I'm sure right now one of their 17-year-old daughters is sitting in a clinic lobby, sobbing quietly and anonymously, praying parents don't find out, or is waiting for mom to pick her up because Reese Research shows that out of wedlock childbirth don't look good on political polls, and daddy ain't having that. Women deserve better than backward governmental policies that don't want to pay for welfare for kids, or health care for kids, or child care for kids, don't want to pay living wages to working mothers, don't want to make men who only want to be last night's lovers responsible for the semen they lay, just flat out don't want to pay for ish, but want to control the woman who's having it. Acting outraged at abortion. Well, I'm outraged that they want us to believe that they believe that women deserve better. The Vatican won't prosecute pedophile priests, but I decide I'm not ready for motherhood and it's condemnation for me. These are the same people who won't support national condom distribution to prevent teenage pregnancy, but women deserve better. Women deserve better than back alley surgeries that leave our wombs barren and empty. Deserve better than organizations bearing the name of land stealing racist rapists, funding million dollar campaigns on subway trains with no money to give these women, while balding middle aged white men tell us what to do with our bodies while they wage wars and kill other people. 
people's babies. So maybe women deserve better than propaganda and lies to get into office. Propaganda and lies to get into panties, to get out of court, to get out of paying child support. Get out of our decisions and give us back our voice. Women do deserve better. Women deserve choice. <laughs>